Hello and welcome to Geek History Lesson. I'm Jason Inman. And I'm Ashley Victoria Robinson. Welcome to your Mind University because you have stumbled upon the podcast where we take one character, construct, team, or blue-laced individual from popular culture and teach you everything that you need to know about them in, oh, about an hour. And this week, we are talking about a repeat character. We are talking about the Blue Beetle, my personal favorite Blue well, Beetle, not, not Ted really, Core. Yeah, not really a repeat character. I would say a legacy character because, like yeah, you said, like last Last week, we covered the third Blue Beetle, Jaime Reyes. Mm-hmm. I can go listen to that anytime. This week, we're tackling the second Blue Beetle, Ted Cord, because he is also in Blue Beetle Rebirth along with Jaime. Uh, I was very surprised because I found out through our students that this lesson was also requested uh, by a lot of a lot of people. We actually. got some uh, we got some mad Blue Beetle love going on on campus here at yeah, the Mind so, University. So I want to throw some mad shout outs to the people that requested Ted Cord. Go for it. Tim Lamb, Tyler Davis. Eric Azana, Jonathan Turner, and Victoria Clarence Rocco. Woo! Thank you guys so much. You're you're all our TAs. I expect all these reports on Ted Core to be uh, in triplicate and in <laughs> and in binders. Nice, very nice. All right, so let's jump into the first section of the podcast. Yes, the first section of the podcast is of course the Ten Cent Origin, where we give you all the basic uh, constructs, code names, and character designs that you need to know in case you go to a sick Justice League party and someone's like, "Yo, who's that Blue Beetle guy?" The Tencent origin for Ted Cord uh, is as follows. He was published by Charlton Comics and DC Comics. Ooh. His first appearance was in Captain Adam number 83 in November of 1966. Wow. Oh, he's a lot younger yep. than I thought he would be. And he was created by Steve Ditko. Now, real quick uh, for our listeners, Ashley, do you know who Steve Ditko is? Uh, Steve Ditko is a very famous artist that most people, I think, associate with the Spider-Man character. Yeah, he helped create Spider-Man mm-hmm. uh, with Stanley. Uh, his full name, uh, Ted, uh, Ted Cord's full name, is Theodore Stephen Ted Cord. <laughs> and his team affiliations have been the Just League, the Just League International, Extreme Justice, blah, 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 almost every Just League team, and the Teen Titans. Uh, <laughs> his partnerships have been with Booster Gold, The Question, The Birds of Prey. And his abilities are he has a genius level intellect. Yes. He's an excellent athlete acrobat. And a hand-to-hand combatant, and he possesses advanced weapons and equipment, and he's a highly skilled spy. Ooh, a spy, you so, say? Yes, he is. So, Ashley, let's move to the meat cute for Ted Cord. Yes, so the meat cute is the part of the podcast where we steal a term for romantic comedy writing, and we tell you the first time we met this character and how cute it was. Yeah, so um, first off, I will go first. Okay. I first met Ted Cord in the death of Superman mm. uh, because uh, it is during the issue there's this issue where Cat Grant is interviewing Superman and they keep inter, uh, juxtaposing back to this giant fight and in, during the fight the Justice League is the Jan Jurgen Justice League not Justice League International was basically being ripped apart by Doomsday and Ted Cord gets his butt kicked pretty good and actually gets induced into a coma from this issue so that's Aww. my first memory <laughs> is not an impressive memory of Ted Cord because my first memory of him is getting his ass kicked I don't know if there is like I love Ted Cord he's my favorite Blue Beetle but I don't know if there is um, uh, if it is possible to have an impressive memory of Ted Cord if we're going to be completely honest what's your meet cute for Ted Cord um I met Ted Cord on the internet uh, in the early 2000s because uh, most of my comic reading up until that point had been pretty centric to the Bat family. I hadn't ventured outside of that in the DC world too, too much. And so I saw a fan art piece of Booster Gold and Blue Beetle that I thought was really, really interesting. And so I Googled them both. And when they turned out to be really funny characters, that was even better. And I think that's why Ted Cord, um, that's why I like so about him. So it was sort him. of fan fiction? No, it wasn't. It was just a, a picture that someone had drawn. Oh, okay. Sorry, my bad. And it's like the two of them, and they're doing like like the rock on like devil horns, oh, okay. and they're making like dumb faces. And the background it says "wah ha ha," and I was like, ah. "Who are these idiots?" Oh, so, so it was the picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then oh. I was like, "What is blue?" You know, and the caption was like "Booster Gold and Blue Beetle." I was like, "What, what is, is Blue Beetle, Beetle and, and Booster Gold?" And then it was love at first uh, Google search. All right, let's move into the History 101 section of our podcast The now. main meat of the lesson where Professor Jason is going to throw down everything we need to know about genius-level intellect, Mr. Ted Cord. Now, Ted Cord has a very complicated publishing history, and we have to mention it. Well, okay? when you when you take a character from one publishing company to another, one would only assume that it's a little complicated. Yes. All right. Now, Ted Cord, as I mentioned earlier, did not start off as a DC Comics character. He was a character that was published by Charlton Comics. Mm-hmm. Now, 
if you know, if you remember from last week, and I'm going to mention it just again, there have been three Blue Beetles. Yes. There was Dan Garrett, the first one, Ted Cord, the second one, Jaime Reyes, the third one. We covered ha- Jaime Reyes last week. Go listen. Now, Dan Garrett is the first Blue Beetle, and he was actually a Fox Comics character. What? And his license was purchased by Charlton. Okay. And then Charlton did some relaunches and da 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 and then they and then Ted Cord came about. I always want to call them Charleston because I guess they're all dancing in my brain. Or the Charleston Chew. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, okay, so let's get back to Charlton Comics. Okay. Uh <laughs> excuse me. I yeah, I now now I've almost said Charlton Chew. Oh, I know. I'm sorry. I'm the worst. <laughs> All right. Charlton Comics, uh, if you don't know about them, they published a wide variety of genres, including crime, science fiction, Western, horror, war, and romance comics, as well as funny animal and superhero titles. <laughs> funny animal. Yep. Now, Charlton Comics lasted from 1945 to 1986. That's pretty impressive. Yep. And we're not going to cover a lot of this. We're just going to cover the last the bit in the 80s. Okay. Now, in the 80s, Charlton was in the decline, mm-hmm. uh, and the comic book industry actually was in a sales slump, except for New Teen Titans and Uncanny X-Men. That's right. Most of Charlton's superhero characters were acquired in 1983 by DC Comics, when former Charlton editor Dick Giordano uh, was then managing editor at DC. Ah. These action hero characters were originally going to be used in DC Comics as part of the Watchmen miniseries written by Alan Moore. Wow. Yeah. But DC then chose to save the characters for other uses. So Alan Moore instead developed new characters loosely based on them. So uh, let's ask you here, Ashley. In Watchmen, you know the characters of Watchmen. Yeah. Who is the basis for Blue Beetle? Uh, Night Owl. Yes, correct. And, and you can even tell from the ship. Yep. And Rorschach is the question who the question uh, and, and Blue Beetle have teamed up right. several times. Uh, Captain Adam is Dr. Manhattan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It goes on and on and on and on. You've yeah. blown my mind How a little bit. How crazy would have Watchmen been if it had used those characters, right? It would have been so weird. Mm-hmm. Can you even imagine the movie? Whoa. Oh, no, we would already have Blue Beetle on screen. Oh, man, that'd be so crazy. Now, the Charlton characters were incorporated into DC's main superhero line, starting in the epic Crisis on Infinite Earth, (laughs) the miniseries of 1985. And in the years to follow, some of them actually enjoyed a lot of popularity at DC, most notably Blue Beetle and Captain Atom. Mm -hmm. Now, here are some of Ted Kord's Charlton comic origins, and then we'll get to the DC origins. Okay. Uh, The Ted Kord Blue Beetle ran as a backup feature in Captain Adam in Captain Adam issues number 83 to 86. This was in November of 1966 to June of 1967. Okay. Before eventually getting his own solo title, which ran for only five issues. Oh, poor yep. Ted. An uh, origin is given in issue number two, linking Ted Cord to the previous Blue Beetle. And Ted was revealed as a former student of Dan Garrett, the first Blue Beetle. Uh, and when they were both investigating Ted's uncle Jarvis Cord, they learned that Jarvis was working to create an army of androids to take over the Earth. Damn, there's so many comics characters named Jarvis, and it's such a ridiculous name. I know. I don't. <laughs> I, I don't know anybody in my real life named Jarvis. Like, was it? I wonder if it was a really popular name in the 1960s it might have and been. has faded since then. And yep. that's why all these characters were named that. Yep. Uh, now, Dan Garrett changed into Blue Beetle, but was killed in the battle. And as he died, he passed on the responsibility of being Blue Beetle to Ted. But he was not able to pass on the mystical scarab. This was actually a convenient means for Steve Dicko to explain his preference for a power free character. Mm. Uh, and, and there was a hint that one android, even though they beat them, was left in stasis. But this would remain unresolved until the DC series of the late 1980s. It actually doesn't matter that much. We're never going to bring it up again. Great. Okay. Okay, and then Ted Core moved over to DC. Sweet. So now that it is settled, uh, let's move into a little bit of his fictional DC history by moving backwards into Ted Cord's past. Now, I will tell you, uh, basically, his origin is still the same. Okay, great. There, there are just slight changes, and there's a little bit of additions. Okay. So uh, let's talk about where Ted Cord was born. Ashley, do you have a guess of what city in America that Ted Cord was born in? Uh, I have no guess, but uh, I- I'm willing to make a wild stab in the dark. Sure, go for is it. Is it a fictional... Can you tell me, is it a fictional D.C. city or is it a real people city? It is a real United States city. I'm going to guess Boston or Chicago. Well, you are right with your second choice. Oh, yeah. So that means that he likes the wind, the cold, and a deep dish pizza. Heck yeah. Now, growing up, uh, Ted Cord was extraordinarily bright. Aw, baby. And he was good at science, business, and basically anything he tried. 
Oh, that's like the American dream. How nice. <laughs> <laughs> to be the Blue Beetle, it is the American dream. It's <laughs> uh, my American dream. <laughs> in college, uh, Ted Cord received degrees in physics, English lit. Ah, he's a compatriot with you. Ah, he's go after my own yep. heart. And theoretical mathematics, just like you. Right. Yes. <laughs> you know me. Theoretical math. He, uh, Ted Cord considered joining his father's business, which was called Cord Omniversal Research and Development Incorporated of Chicago. Oh, my God, dude. He should have kept that name. It yep. is so great. Uh, but overall, uh, Ted Cord after college really had no direction. In a brief retcon appearance in Justice League uh, Year One, uh, written by Mark Wade, a brilliant miniseries, yes. by the way, this showed a young Ted Cord working in Court Industries R&D where he designed the Justice League headquarters security system. Upon meeting the Justice League, he thought screw the family business. I want to be one of those guys. I want to be a superhero. Yeah. Now, th- again, that's a that's a, that's a retcon. That's not originally his thing, so we're going to go back to his original origin. But I think that's a neat little kind of like subconscious thing that maybe existed in his mind. I like that too because uh, DC has this thing about characters trying to be the best versions of themselves yeah. and I like that Ted's best version of himself is like look I'm not super powered but I'm real smart so I should save people <laughs> uh, now Ted's uncle remember him yes and remember I told you that he attempted to make to take over the world yeah, yeah, yeah. well that still exists in the DC version of Ted Cord Ted sets out to stop him recruiting the help of his archaeology teacher Dan Garrett the first blue beetle uh, who would call on a superhuman powers uh, the ancient scarab and now this again as I said was the a- android tell Jarvis Cord previous mm-hmm. cover in Charlton comics and in the course of this adventure Dan Garrett was fatally wounded and asked Ted to carry on the legacy of the blue beetle passing the scarab on to him however Ted Cord couldn't get the scarab to work for him and eventually set it aside, electing to go out and be a hero without it. So not that smart after all. <laughs> uh, no, it just you just couldn't get it to work. Well, so he's not that smart. Well, it's not, it has nothing to do with smartness. It's, it's smart. Okay. <laughs> uh, if you remember from last week, that scarab was magically uh, hurt. I, I do remember. So I there do you remember. Go. It, was, it, was, it had his healing powers yep. on. Now, Ted Cord trained himself to his physical peak and constructed an aerial vehicle affectionately nicknamed the Bug, just like Archimedes yes. in Watchmen. They both had big googly mm. eye windows. Yep. And he made himself a Blue Beetle costume and set out to establish his own identity as a superhero using his wit, his agility, and a large number of gadgets to stop evildoers. That's funny because I don't think of Ted as being particularly mm. agile. <laughs> Yeah, well, he, <laughs> he's kind of bounding. He's kind of an acrobat. Yeah, a little right. bit. Uh, now, after losing his wife, Ted's father neglected Cord Omniversal, letting it become a basically a ruined company. Mm-hmm. Ted revitalized the company, building it up until it became one of the top R&D companies in the United States, rivaling Star Labs. Heck yeah. And then Crisis on Infinite Earths happened. Dun, 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 dun. Ashley, as we've talked on this podcast many times, what happens in Crisis on Infinite Earths? There are too many Earths. So DC's like only one Earth and maybe Earth 2 a little bit later. So then there's only one Earth. Yep. Basically, that's it. And all the past history of the DC Universe didn't happen. Yeah. Until it's convenient for it to be brought back. Well, for one of the few times in this podcast, Ashley, we're actually going to talk about what happened in Crisis on Infinite Earth. Oh, my God. Let's. Now, in that miniseries, Ted Cord was recruited by the Monitor. Mm-hmm. The monitor is one of these things that sets to watch out the multiverse yes. to help fight the anti-monitors, shadow demons. Great. They're just little shadow demons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, enough said. <laughs> Ted discovered that Dan Scarab was able to utterly destroy the shadow demons, but was sent back when the monitor found that the scarab couldn't be used as he wished. Ted kept fighting in the crisis, but lost hold of the scarab in the turmoil and couldn't find it in the aftermath. So the most important fact here is that Ted Kor just lost the scarab. Mm-hmm. The scarab resurfaced some time after the crisis, apparently having resurrected Dan Garrett and sent him on a crazed rampage. Great. And when Ted Ted confronted Dan and the Scarab. The Scarab spoke to him, telling Ted that it wanted him as his new host and offering him the use of its powers. Ted refused and helped Dan Garrett break the Scarab's control over him, shattering the Scarab's physical form and letting Dan die a final death, leaving Ted to grieve for his mentor one final time. Man, I didn't realize that uh, poor Mr. Dan Garrett has died so many times. Yes, he has. He's like the Jean Grey of the story. Now, Ted's father eventually recovered enough to take back Court Omniversal, but the company was devastated by Karapax, one of Ted Cord's villains. Mm-hmm. And Ted left 
to make his name in the superhero business. Yay. So Ted joined the Justice League as it was being reformed and often served as, uh, let's say, the pilot for many of the League's adventures because they would ride around on the bug. That's true. That's very yep. true. Yeah. And during the JLI adventures, Ted met and befriended his best friend, Booster Gold. Yes. Now, he became a mainstay of the Justice League for many years and fought such villains as Despero, Overlord, Eclipso, and Dr. Destiny. And it was during this time with the League that he made many lifelong friends like Fire, Ice, mm. Mr. Miracle, mm-hmm. the Martian Manhunter, mm-hmm. and as I said, Booster Gold. Now, Booster Gold and Blue Beetle became partners in crime, and they pulled many pranks in the League, like sabotaging uh, Guy Gardner's date with Ice, uh, buying all the Oreo cookies in New York City to mess with Martian Manhunter's Oreo addiction. That is so funny. Yep. You've never read that story. <laughs> it's amazing. And uh, Ted's uh, sense of humor often got him into trouble with other members of the League, especially the women. <laughs> and, well, I was also going to say notably Batman. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> However, behind his jokes was a sincerity of heart and the knowledge of his responsibility as a Blue Beetle and a desire to make the world safer for all. So at the end of the day, he was a good guy. He definitely is a good guy. And when you get deep into his stories and his dynamic with Booster Gold, you really get the sense that Ted is the heart of that relationship. 100%. 100%. He's a sweetie. Now, uh, the other thing that you need to know is that even though he is a prankster, mm-hmm. He is highly respected for his scientific genius. Yes. His ship, as I said, the bug, was the main transportation. Mm -hmm. And when he was in the lab, he started to lose his edge as a fighter and even gained some weight during his time with the team. Oh, this is like my ideal Ted Cord is Matt Ted Cord. This was a big problem for Ted, and it was something he struggled with for a long time. He was eventually helped back into fighting shape by General Glory and set up a non-powered boxing match with Guy Gardner. Mm -hmm. Ted was winning the match, but Guy lost his temper and hit Beetle between the rounds when his back was turned. And when Beetle fell... Well, Guy didn't let up in raging several several leaguers. Yeah, Guy Gardner's a jerk. Mm-hmm. Now, the Justice League International eventually uh, broke apart, mm-hmm. and Beetle and Booster became a part of the Dan Jurgens pre-Death of Superman Justice League. Okay. It was also during this time that Ted was injured badly in many of his fights during his stint with the League, mm-hmm. suffering at least two comas, the worst coming in the Battle of Doomsday. I mentioned that in my meet cute. Yes. And that lasted for a long period of time. And when Ice apparently died at the hands of Overlord, uh, Ted and Booster Gold joined Captain Adam's darker team called Extreme Justice. That's the best name ever. That's now, so 90s. Now, let me give you a little bit about the awesome 90s uh Extreme Justice. Please do. I am thrilled. Um, now, Extreme Justice <laughs> forms out of Captain... <laughs> yeah, sorry. I can't. That's so what? funny. <laughs> the, the non-enunciation? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, Extreme Justice <laughs> forms out of Captain Adam's issues with current Justice League chairperson Wonder Woman and her handling of the Judgment Day event. Can't take a woman in charge. I yep. get it. This event is all about the character called the Overmaster, an alien who just wants to conquer Earth. Okay. When en route to Earth, the Overmaster sends his powers ahead. The undercurrents of humanity are disrupted by his coming arrival as sensitives around the planet become unnerved, psychics and, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Cults pop up around the world, mm-hmm. causing the three Justice League teams of the time, Just League America, Just League International, and the Just League Task Force to deal with these cults and madmen. Meanwhile, the Overmaster's powers triggered the metagenes of various humans, transforming them into his new heralds. Kind of sounds like Galactus, right? It does sound like Galactus now that you mention it. (laughs) Unknown to the Overmaster, however, his powers also triggered the dormant metagene of Will Everett III, the grandson of the Golden Age Amazing Man. Mm. Will inherits his grandfather's powers, becoming the new Amazing Man, and he travels to New York City to meet up with the current League. Cool. Now, it is not only the sensitives and the cultists that realize that something bad's coming to Earth. <laughs> Vandal Savage, Desaad, and Despero each individually war- warned the Justice League of the coming of the Overmaster. So it's not only the crazy psychics and it's not only the crazy cultists, it's the crazy bad yep. guys. <laughs> Wonder Woman calls for all current Justice League members to New York City, including uh, re recruiting Jay Garrick and the visiting Amazing Man. And after an argument, Captain Adams like, screw it, I'm going to take a team and I'm going to go investigate what the hell's going on. Cool. Unfortunately, his team is beaten very badly by Overmaster's new heralds, the the Cadra. Oh, no. Now, with the team retreating, mm-hmm. during the retreat, Booster Gold is shot, 
mm-hmm. and his arm is cut off. However, this is an injury that should have easily killed Booster. It should have. Booster undergoes surgery to cauterize his missing arm. The League falls into disarray uh, as a team of League reservists fall to fight the guys that shot Booster, and Wonder Woman and Captain Adam fight over the team's next course of action. The League then splits into two teams. Okay. Captain Adam's team goes on the offensive, while Wonder Woman's team continues to stand uh, with the UN's dictum of standing down. Aha. Uh-huh. Now, it was learned during this that Overmaster has somehow froze all deaths and births on the planet. So nobody's being born and nobody's dying. H- all right. Hence the reason why Booster Gold survives. It's pretty oh. silly and stupid. Just go with it. I am going with it. Now, the League comes under attack from half of Overmaster's cadre, led by their mind-controlling former teammate, Ice. Mm-hmm. The cadre destroys the Just League embassy in New York and take fire hostage, forcing the League on the offensive. This triggers the UN to launch the Maxwell Lord created League Busters, a team designed to take down the Justice League should they go rogue. Never, never, never do what Maxwell Lord suggests. Nope. Now, Maxwell Lord at this time is still a good guy. Never do what Maxwell Lord suggests. Okay. <laughs> Back at Star Labs, Blue Beetle and a tech team graft a cybernetic arm onto Booster's body, and they are there to witness the Overmaster's transmission. He has set up a device that will detonate in 24 hours, wiping the Earth clean of humanity. Wow. Blue Beetle comes up with an idea on how to stop the Overmaster, and he and Booster Gold meet up with both Wonder Woman and Captain uh, Adam, almost called him America, team, who are regrouping <laughs> for a final assault on Overmaster's ship on Mount Everest. Ooh, that's tall. Now, the joint league assaults the Overmaster ship in three teams, one led by Captain Adam, one led by Metamorpho, which I'm glad because he doesn't get to lead many teams. He doesn't. And one by Wonder Woman. <laughs> almost never, in fact. <laughs> facing both the Cadre and the Harsh Weather. The League succumbs to losses along the way. Eventually, the Cadre is defeated, and a small group, Amazing Man, Blue Beetle, Booster Gold, Captain Adam, Flash, Martian Manhunter, and Wonder Woman, not so small, is left (laughs) to face the Cadre's leader, Ice. Martian Manhunter managed to break Ice free from control, just as Fire is able to free herself from the Cadre's restraints, and the League faces the Overmaster, who kills Ice for her betrayal. This is one of Ice's many deaths. Many deaths, yeah, yeah, yeah. The League tries to stop Overmaster, while Blue Beetle tries to stop the Overmaster's device, which is primed to destroy humanity. Amazing Man absorbs Overmaster's energy, fighting the giant toe-to-toe. Blue Beetle deactivates the device, and the League defeat the Overmaster, but find out that his base is about to explode. Well, damn. <laughs> the League escapes the explosion, but with births and deaths back to normal, Booster Gold collapses dead. No. But Booster. unknown to Booster and the League, old Ted Cord had a trick up his sleeve. He sure did. Blue Beetle rigged a cardiac life support system in Booster's rebuilt armor, armor, which restarts his heart immediately and brings him back to life. Yes. Look at you, Ted Cord. He's so smart. Now, the League receives word, of course, as I said, that the births and deaths have, have continued, mm-hmm. and they've, they've, they 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 retreat back to get the body of their fallen teammate, Ice, and they return home. So this leads Captain Adam, this whole, that Shemegi, mm-hmm. leads Captain Adam to forming extreme justice. Oh, that, okay, now we're back to that. Yep. <laughs> okay. And also, Blue Beetle was integral to taking down Overmaster, which is what I want to talk about. And saving Booster's life. It's yep. very important. Now, Adam forms his new team in order to be more proactive than the other teams, seeking out threats and eliminating them, and Adam eschews the sanction by the United Nations, seeing such endorsement as a hindrance to the uh, to his league's effectiveness. Oh no! The team operates out of Mount Thunder, and on <laughs> one of their first missions, they stop a military coup by a general, and they prevent a nuclear holocaust. Well, that's nothing to sneeze at. No, their next mission is nothing to sneeze at either, and it involves them trying to cure Ronnie Raymond of his leukemia, where the treatment reawakens his firestorm powers at an uncontrollable level. Amazing Man eventually absorbs the excess energy from Ronnie and Professor Stein cures him. Yay! Uh, Captain Adam then leads the Extreme Justice team (laughs) in an invasion of the fake DC country Bialya. 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 Uh, following Queen Beatrice's rebuilding of the extremists, which is just a DC terrorist team. Yeah. They invade the country, destroying many cyborgs and manufacturing facilities through the country. Following the mission, Extreme Justice <laughs> is disbanded <laughs> along with every other various Justice League teams. You sound like a TV commercial for some toys. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I now, love it. why do you think that all these Justice League teams were disbanded? 
Because they're going to make a new one. Yes, because Grant Morrison's <laughs> JLA was coming down the pike, and DC wanted all JLO titles that weren't his shut down. That's right. But you know what you can't shut down? What can't you shut down? A great story. Oh. And we announced last week, and we're going to say it again, that we have, Ashley and myself, a new story collected in an anthology that you yourself can purchase. It's a story called Terrific. Yes. It was co-written by myself and Ashley Victoria Robinson with art by Nick Robles and lettering by Taylor Esposito. The story is part of the If Anthology IF published by Alterna Comics. It comes out in November, but we need you to run, not walk, and also maybe fly in your bug machine to your local comic book shop and order it. You'll see the issue in September previews, and if you like any of the stories and pitches that we bandy about on the show, our general goofiness, then we think you'll like our story terrific. So go check out the If Anthology with a story by myself and Ashley by Alterna Comics available in November, and you can pre-order in your comic book shop that makes a big difference in September. We thank you in advance. Yes. Now back to Ted Cord. Ted Cord. From there, Ted and Captain Adam become part of a group called Law. Which, what do you think? It's, a, it's an acronym. We throw out a guess for what you think it stands uh, for. League Awareness of Winter. <laughs> So it's the Justice League team that fights winter? It's, it's the Justice League team of, uh, of Westeros. Uh, uh, incorrect. It actually stands for Living Assault Weapons. Oh, that's terrible. Yep. Now, Living Assault Weapons actually consisted of many of the former Charlton properties, because Captain Adam, of course, is oh, a Charlton. Oh, of course, yeah. Uh, and... Uh, in order, this 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 law, in order to stop Judo Master Sidekick Tiger uh, and his personal attacks on the warmongers of the world, that's why this team is formed because mm-hmm. they're they're there to take down Judo Master Sidekick. Okay. Now, at the end of this mission with Law, <laughs> Ted would take a hiatus <laughs> from his identity as Blue Beetle. He needed a vacation. Yep. He restarted control of his business from his father, and he eventually made Cord Omniversal a subsidiary of Wayne Enterprises. We need to bring back Omniversal as a name of businesses. Sure. Geek History Lesson Omniversal. Omniversal. We're ready. Here we go. Done. <laughs> Incorporated. Is that too much? LLC. Okay. Uh, <laughs> now, Ted, later on, would go on to meet Barbara Gordon. Who is Barbara Gordon? Uh, she is the first, but also the second Batgirl who was Oracle and is currently Batgirl in the uh, DC Rebirth universe. Yes, and at this time she was Oracle. Uh, they eventually met as internet chat buddies. The two started out not knowing each other's identities, but it would eventually solve each other's alter egos before finally meeting in person. And then through the course of their friendship, the two became close, with Ted developing a strong crush on Barbara. And then this was during the first Bird of Birds of Prey series, and it's actually really cute, because they do the subplot of them chatting online for a long time and then they realize that it's Ted Cord and it's Barbara Gordon. I always thought it was a little bit weird because I imagine Ted Cord being a, t- a contemporary of Bruce Wayne and for me, I'm like mm, but but Bruce Wayne's like her father figure. Uh, you know, actually, I think I would put Ted Cord at the age of Dick Grayson. So younger than Miss Barbara Gordon. He is younger because if you look at the Just League International, he's younger than Bruce Wayne. I will respectfully disagree. I kind of think that Bruce Wayne is more of a contemporary of his father. Interesting. Yeah. yeah Maybe. Yeah. I don't think it's as weird. I, I actually I actually kind of always like the Ted Cord, Barbara Gordon. They, well, they never hook up, so don't no, worry no, about no, it. No, 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 no. Uh, so, Ted doesn't have that much confidence to ask her out. <laughs> but this did lead to Ted to begin working with Barbara and her birds of prey, mm-hmm. providing her with an aircraft for transportation, and also it restarted his superhero career. He started putting the Blue Beetle costume on again. But soon after this, we learned that Ted developed a heart condition uh, uh, that was pretty severe, but then he still continued his heroics. Yeah, why not? Now, during Identity crisis, Ted led a team in search of Heatwave, a Flash rogue, uh, who was actually one of the initial suspects in the murder of Sue Dibney, mm-hmm. the, Ra- the, the, the wife of Ralph Dibney, which is what Identity Crisis is all about. Yes. Now, during this time, we're going to skip ahead and then we're going to skip a little bit back. Sure. The Scarab, believed to be of Dan Garrett's here, I remember that? Yeah, I do. I do. Which Ted thought was destroyed back uh-huh, in Christ uh-huh, and Inverse, uh-huh. was actually discovered by Carter Hall Hawkman in a tomb in Egypt. Okay. Ted acquired the scarab, but couldn't get it to work for him again in the way that his mentor Dan made it. And during the course of this, uh, Ted began investigating the origin 
of Omac. The scarab is activated by a flash of white lightning and leads Ted to the wizard Shazam. There it is remaining on the Rock of Eternity, Shazam's home, until Shazam's death by Eclipso and the scarab would eventually fall to Earth and make its way into the hands of Jaime Reyes, who we just, as I said several times, we did a complete history lesson on last week. Go find it on iTunes. We sure did. But now we're going to back up a bit because I wanted you to, to get the journey of the scarab to see how it connected to Jaime. Okay, great. Now, a little while uh, before this, a shipment of kryptonite was stolen from one of Cord Omniversal's warehouses. Oh, no. Ted's various friends and allies looked into it for a while, but soon returned to their own lines. And that hadn't been enough. Ted was set upon by a gang of madmen. They basically just kind of look like crazy creepers, you know, the, bo- the boa-wearing Jack Ryder guy? Yeah, totally, totally. And with Booster's help, Ted set out to investigate the kryptonite threat, and in doing so, he unwittingly ran up against the shadows of the impending Infinite Crisis crossover. Whoa. Now, during the course of his investigations, he saw Booster blasted by a bolt of energy from Brother Eye, which landed Booster in the hospital. And he witnessed the beginning of the Ram Thanagar War. Uh, Ram, of course, is where Adam Strange is from. Thanagar is where the Hawkmen are from. Yep. However, Ted found that no one else apart from Wonder Woman seemed willing or able to hear what he had been dis- he discovered about the threat, leaving him to go about it alone. Now, this is all in the Countdown to Infinite Crisis single issues. Okay. Everything we're telling you about, right? It's, it's a one shot. On the trail of his last remaining lead, a bug that he placed on one of the Mad Men, Ted tracked the signal from the bug to Checkmate headquarters in Switzerland, where he discovered a series of files that held the identities, strengths, and weaknesses of all of Earth's heroes. Mm-hmm. There, he confronted the mastermind behind Checkmate mate it's black king ted's one-time friend maxwell lord what who i planned, told you not to trust yep, maxwell lord who planned to kill earth's metahumans using brother eye and the omax making the planet safe for humanity uh what is brother eye ashley a brother eye is the evil satellite yep, and the omax are the robots yeah yep seizing his opportunity when checkmates files were unexpectedly deleted ted made a break for it but was brutally beaten by an omax and locked up after being offered a chance to change sides by max he looked at Max and told him to rot in hell, and Maxwell Lord shot and killed his former ally. It's, I think it's a really heroic moment for Ted Cord, and I think it's a really tragic death, because I remember reading this um, shortly after, I, I read like the first trade, the first collection of this, and I was like at the height of my Ted Cord uh, infatuation, and I was really sad when it it's happened. A t- it's a tough death, mm-hmm. but... I think, to be honest with you, it's probably the most important thing that Ted Cord has ever done. It is. It's it's the height of his bravery, mm-hmm. sure. And thus, Ted Cord is dead. Oh, I think you taught a great lesson and did a lot of really great research this week. We have more. Oh, wait, it's comics. Barbara Gordon, remember her? Oh, who Babs. Had, who had been a close friend of Ted's, established a memorial in his name mm-hmm. uh, with scholarships and all kinds of things. Yeah, it's really nice. And the Blue Beetle name survived too with, again, Hispanic teenager Jaime Reyes. Yes. Now soon, <laughs> Booster Gold ain't done. Booster Gold is asked by Rip Hunter, time traveler, for his help to set the timeline right. (gasps) Booster Gold agrees, but with the stipulation that they go back in time and save Ted Cord. Yes. Hunter tries to dissuade him from as he makes Booster witness Barbara Gordon's crippling attack over and over again. As Booster was about to accept Ted's unfortunate fate, a future Blue Beetle arrives from the past arrives with past Blue Beetle Dan Garrett and current Blue Beetle Jaime Reyes. The future Beetle claims that the saving of Ted Kord's life is essential. And despite pleading by Rip Hunter, Booster and the three Blue Beetles go back in time and save Ted Kord before he was shot by Maxwell Lord. However, Booster and Ted return to the future and they discover that Lord and his Omax have turned the Earth into a police state. Yeah, it's not good. Not good. Booster Gold and Ted Kord encounter a version of Hawkman and Green Arrow leading a resistance team against Maxwell Lord and a mind-controlled Superman. And eventually the two would gather their past teammates of the Justice League International. And during the battle, the future Beetle is revealed to be the Black Beetle. A, a future villain of Jaime Reyes, who we talked a lot about in last week's lesson. Yes, we did. We talked about him extensively. These two lessons go hand in hand. You got to listen to both. You definitely do. Also, Black Beetle reveals his own secret team called the Time Stealers, consisting <laughs> of Per Degaton, Ultra Humanite, Despero, and Booster's dad, John Carter. Mm-hmm. As Ted watched his friends killed off one after another, he realizes that the only way to set things right is to go back in time and die as he was supposed to. Yep. Black Beetle tries to prevent 
prevent this, and he and Ted disappear into the time sphere, leading Booster Gold to believe that things have been set right again. Aw, poor Booster. And then Blackest Night happens. What's Blackest Night, Ashley? Uh, Blackest Night is the revelation that there aren't just colored lanterns, there are also black lanterns. And what are the black lanterns? The black lanterns can raise zombie versions of your dead favorite DC heroes. Yes. And... And Ted Cord is reanimated by a black power ring as a black lantern in one of the Blackest Night uh, tie-ins in the Booster Gold series, actually. Yeah, I actually mm-hmm. think, uh, I'm not a huge Blackest Night person. Uh, if you're a zombie... This is one of the best issues. This is definitely one of the best issues. It also gives Booster Gold a really nice uh, emotional moment, which I think he doesn't mm-hmm. get enough of. Uh, because this black lantern, Blue Beetle, is unable to locate Booster Gold due to Booster being time traveling, Mm -hmm. Black Lantern Cord lures him into the open by targeting his 21st century ancestors, Daniel Carter and Rose Levin. Mm -hmm. With the help of a Black Lantern BB gun, he's able to beat Supernova Skeets and the third Blue Beetle, Jaime Reyes, until Booster arrives. And Booster is able to stop Ted, and he takes his remains, takes the Black Lantern ring off of it, and he buries his good friend Ted Cord in a place where time is non-existent, the vanishing point, which I think that's so nice, uh, so that no one can ever uh, mess with his remains ever again. Mm-hmm. And then the new Fifty Two happens. Actually, what's the new Fifty Two? In two thousand eleven, DC said, "Hey, uh, we need to streamline this whole thing." So they basically relaunched their entire universe with every character except uh, Batman and Green Lantern only having been around for about five that's years. That's right. And they all got a uh, new costume. And Ted Cord was not in the new Fifty Two. Jaime Re- Jaime Reyes was, what? but in the event Forever Evil. Ted Cord appears for the first time. He does. As a young 20-year-old, Luther wants to buy him out of the fledgling Cord Industries from under him through his parents. Uh, and then it is revealed through uh, Rebirth, a new DC Rebirth, that Ted Cord is a man in his 30s and has been an established hero for some excuse me, some time, and he is the presumptive mentor to Jaime Reyes. And it's really exciting because we get a Blue Beetle title that has our two favorite Blue Beetles. Yeah, I was like, it's exciting for us here at the Mind mm-hmm. University in particular. <laughs> and that is all for the comic book versions of Ted Cord. Let's talk about some other versions of Ted and some other media. In Kingdom Come, uh, you want to briefly explain what Kingdom Come is, Ashley? Uh, Kingdom Come is a really cool Mark Wade story that I With guess... Art by Ox Ross. Uh, yes, uh, which I guess you could call it is an Elseworlds tale. It is an Elseworlds tale. Um, it is set in the future where the new generation of superheroes doesn't agree with the old generation of superheroes. They kind of live in a police state, and the old generation of superheroes has to decide what they want to do about that. Now, during this storyline, Ted Cord appears as Blue Beetle during Kingdom Come. He joins Batman's team yes, and is killed by the nuclear explosion in the final battle. Mm-hmm. Uh, in Batman the Brave and the Bold, Ted appears in Batman the Brave and the Bold episode Fall of the Blue Beetle. He teams up with Batman against his uncle and ends up sacrificing himself in a less violent death for younger viewers. Now, Ted has appeared in several other episodes and flashbacks, including several Jaime Reyes episodes. And we've seen a flashback in that show with a team up with Booster Gold. See, I think Ted um, and Ted and Booster together are great great characters to be involved in an animated show and I think that they fit the tone of Brave and the Bold really, really well. Ted Cord also appeared in season 10 of Smallville in the episode called Booster. Say what? Ted Cord yeah, is played by Sebastian Spence and this version of Ted Cord never became the second Blue Beetle but... Uh, in this series, he is the CEO of Cord Industries, which develops and studies advanced alien technology, and Ted receives help from Booster Gold to search for the missing Beetle Scarab. And in the continuation digital comics of Smallville Season 11, Ted Gord goes on to employ Jaime Reyes, Blue Beetle, and Booster Gold as personal security. Oh, I didn't know that. That's cool. Yep. And he also appears in the Young Justice Invasion series. Ted is mentioned in the episode Salvage, mm-hmm. though he never appears directly. Jaime Reyes explains that Ted Core was the previous Blue Beetle and that he was murdered by the Light, the Cabal of Villains, of course, before the series began. Yes. And lastly, in Arrow... In the season, the first season episode, The Undertaking, Ted Cord was mentioned by Maura Queen that she attended another one of Ted Cord's fundraisers. Yes. Cord and, Industries is like all over yep. the implied DC Cinematic mm-hmm. Universe. And that is it for Ted Cord. 
Wow. Yep, a lot of there. Let's move on into recommended reading. Yes, where we are going to recommend some stuff that you can read. You can find all of our recommendations on geekhistorylesson.com slash recommended reading. There are nice little Amazon buttons for you if you go there and pick up some of your class reading materials. A little bit comes back our way so we can keep researching these scarabs that are falling to earth. That's right. Now, first off, I'm going to recommend Justice League International Volume 1. This is the Boahaha League. It's so good. Uh, this is where Booster and Blue Beetle first meet. This is where Beetle uh, first joins the Justice League. Um, this is probably the greatest run of his character. Definitely. Justice League International. Mm-hmm. Uh, next, I would suggest Booster Gold, Blue and Gold. This is where the, the I talked about where Booster Gold tries to resurrect Ted. And it's kind of like, for me, it is Booster and Ted's final adventure. And Definitely. It's, and it's really cool. And also, you get to see all the generations of the Beatles uh, fight, which, which is, is really, really cool. cool. And then lastly, this is out of print, but it's still on Amazon. You can find it. The OMAC Project. You can buy it from other sellers. Now, you might be like, well, the OMAC Project? What the hell are you talking about? The OMAC Project trade... The very first issue in that trait is the Countdown to Final Crisis, yes. which is the issue that I told you about that is all about Ted's death. It yeah. is uh, Phil Jimenez art. Great, great issue. And it's probably Ted Core's most important moment. Yeah, very sad. Until uh, Blue Beetle Rebirth, of course. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> now, let's yeah. move on into discussion. Ashley, Jason. you said in your meet cute, you met Ted Core through some fan art. I did. Why do you like Ted Kord? What is it about um, Ted Kord that you like? Because <laughs> he honestly is a character that was most prevalent before you were born. So what? <laughs> well, I will. Oh, well, then I will flip it on that. I will flip this on you. Um, he is very much a product of the period he was created in. He was. And if you're going to stack him up against Jaime Reyes, and if you're going to stack him up against a lot of his contemporary characters, whether they're um, Charlton characters or within the DCU, Ted is kind of a lackluster character. But the thing that I like about him is kind of the same thing that I like about Bart Allen. I describe Bart Allen as the screw-up Flash because he wants so much to be good and to live up to this legacy. Um, But when he's really young, he's kind of this dopey, goofy kind of guy. And while Ted is very intelligent and very well connected, I feel like he's not a great superhero. Mm. Um, he's a good. Ta- do you think he's like, like better as like a Bruce Wayne, like a CEO of a company? I, I do. I think he's a good tactician. I think he's a good builder. I think he's a great. I think he's a great mind, but I don't think he's a great superhero. And I think that when he becomes friends with Booster, they also try really hard to be like good partners, a mm. great like a dynamic duo, and they can't do it. I feel like Ted is always trying so hard to live up to the potential as he sees himself and he never achieves it and I like like he's sort of tragic to me mm-hmm. um, and that's why I really like I like like dumpy like I like fat you like the t- dumpy superheroes because, oh. because I'm just like oh man like that just epitomizes for me like you're trying so hard and you can't do it like I just think Ted <laughs> is like adorable and I want to like help him and he bring him coffee he shouldn't have ate all the Oreos that, well, he, that he tried to steal from Marshall Manor. I mean, you got to put him somewhere. Okay, that's true. Um, In your gullet. Yeah, I just think, I don't know. Um, well, let me ask you this question. You have a lot of love for Ted Cord. I do. I um, want to be his friend. At the time of this recording, we have not read Blue Beetle Rebirth. We have not. So, pre-Blue Beetle Rebirth, mm-hmm. what do you think Ted Cord's legacy is in the DCU? Um, I think it is twofold. Okay. Um, I think it is is the the Bwahaha Justice League. It's it's his goofy relationship with Booster Gold. It is the mem- the, the levity that they bring uh, to that team. And I really like. I think it's dying. It's the same thing that I would say about Gwen Stacy. Like Gwen Stacy's a character that I really like, but the greatest thing she does is she dies. Yeah. Um. And, and I would say it's his sacrifice. And I think that the that's cool because the the Rebirth series now has a chance to redefine him for a new set of readers. Interesting. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, that's the end of the discussion. Let's move on into the teaching tweet. Yes, we're in 140 characters or less. Professor Jason will condense everything he just said. Ted Cord. The most important thing he ever did as Blue Beetle was die. But I'm really glad he's back. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I'm so glad you included that. Yeah, of course. I had to include that, guys. And that ends our lesson on Blue Beetle Ted Cord. Get your butts to a comic book shop and read Blue Beetle Rebirth and then go get some of the uh, recommended readings in case you like them. I want to really quick uh, say thank you again to uh, Tim Lamb, Tyler Davis, Eric Azana, Jonathan Turner, and Victoria Clarence Rocco for suggesting Ted Cord. I believe uh, Victoria Clarence Rocco also suggested Jaime Reyes, and I cut off half her name when I copied it onto our list, so I 
apologize that we said it wrong last week. Oh, my bad. Uh, no, it, I, it was my bad. Oh, did I just say, I said rock? You, you said rock, and that was because oh, I didn't copy it, so I'm I want to apologize, uh, oh. my darling, but we do appreciate you. Well, guys, if you want to go back and listen to uh, past episodes where we mispronounce other people's names, you can do that on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher. That's where you're going to find that Jaime Reyes uh, podcast episode that we mentioned several, several times in case you haven't listened to it. Guys, also on all of those avenues, you can leave us star ratings and reviews, especially on iTunes, and it lets other listeners find us in the search algorithm, and we're going to read some reviews just like this one Ooh. from Hoy Duck Tran. Sweet. My wife and I adore this podcast. The team behind it has perfect harmony, sound great together, and know all of the awesome, nerdy, and pop culture things they're talking about. So thanks for that review, Hoy Duck Tran. I'm so happy that you listened to it with your wife. That's so nice. It's probably not a real name. I'm gonna... it, you don't know. Oh, I, I could not know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but thank you. So go over to iTunes and leave a review just like them, mm-hmm. and we will read it on our podcast. And it helps us, helps other listeners, and expand the Mind University. You know, we got to have an annex. we got to have an annex. we got to have a Mind University annex. Man, we need that tuition money. In Detroit. <laughs> in Detroit. In Detroit. In fake yeah. Gotham. So if they also want to be like some really cool people that suggested Ted Cord, where else can they do that, Ashley? They can do that on Facebook.com slash Geek History Lesson or GeekHistoryLesson.com. There's a bunch of different ways to contact us in both places. Yes, and you can come and complain to us on Twitter that we ha too much in this episode. Never. Uh, for me on Twitter at Jawin J-A-W-I-I-N and for Ashley on Twitter at Ashley V. Robinson. If you like all the stuff we do, we also have run a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Jawin. Mm-hmm. All kinds of cool stuff over there. Okay, that is it for Ted Gord, the geek history lesson extraordinaire. That's all you're gonna get. Uh, we'll come back next week for a uh, Mysterious Metropolis Lady. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Uh, I have been your <laughs> professor, uh, Jason Theodore Inman. I am Ashley Victoria Robinson. And Professor Jason, will you please dismiss the class? Uh, please read your textbooks on theoretical mathematics, uh, pages uh, six through eight. And if you don't, I will steal all the Oreos in the Tri-County area. Until next class, students. <laughs>